just going back to me, I basically I basically operate on the basis of you know what I can do rather than what I can't do, and you will bang your head against a brick wall if you try and fire the system. In other words, don't think of trying to make these things. Um, if you see something else when you go out and everybody says how fantastic they are, um, then you're talking about someone who's already branded something. And obviously brand is something that people look into. And some people are very brand sensitive. But I'm not interested particularly in that. I'm just interested in connecting with people and what people like as opposed to what people like that other people say that they like. Because that's different. That's something when people attach a value to something but then there is the old saying that you can get some people that know the price of everything and the value of nothing. And that's a very good saying. I remember my granddad saying that saying. So that's what you've got to be thinking of. Who you are, what's inside you, what you can do with whatever talents you've got, your brain and your hands, and what you can do within a given time frame. And I found I particularly, I tried doing things like um, heavy manual labour and things like that. And it, it does feel good to do a, to do a, to a hard day's work at manual labour, as long as, as long as you're rewarded properly for do, for doing so. But if you have other talents besides that, you've got to find some sort of outlet for them, because otherwise it will um, really get you down if you're not allowed to outlet whatever talents you have. And a good example of how I felt positive about the end of my job, um, one of my jobs, which didn't work out, was. You had to pay for the material uh, of the clothing, the works clothing you had, and they had rules about what you had to wear for your top. And my top, I got a bill at the end for it for £10, and I didn't like the top. So basically, being a crafter, I turned the top into two neck warmers, and I've done a whole, a whole video blog about how you do that. That's one of them, this is one I wore. Because we've had something like three to four months of continuous frost sometimes down to minus six, minus five on a chill factor with the wind. And this, if you, if you fold it over, will come on to four layers of very, very thick material to keep you warm. And if I just pop my hat off now. Now, where was I? Yeah, I'm just showing you what I did with the top. You know, these works tops, and even when they were um, battered, etc., you had to wash them yourself, and uh, you got given two. And of course, I had to pay for mine. Um, because I was ill when I left uh, the job and basically I, I turned it into two neck warmers because uh, I wouldn't wear it obviously because it was a worktop and I paid for it so this one here which is um, the, rough, the, the rougher of the two if you like but the warmer of them basically I kept the stretch fabric from the bottom of the, the, the top on and this was the torso, this was basically the front and back torsos of the top. Ripped the sleeves off, cut them off. Um, and then using the sewing machine, I ran uh, stitches on the inside using stretch stitches, zigzag stretch stitches on, on the inside. And that's double layered, so I folded it over. Um, and there's, there's always a raggy end to it, so there was a neat end, which is the top end. That's the top, that's the top end there, which, which is visible if you go down the street. And the bottom end here, which is the raggy end, I put a whole load of, um, I'll show you more closer up, I put like a zigzag stretch stitch, and I double layered it with a straight stitch as well. And it's raggy, but it doesn't matter because I've sealed it with the stitching. But when I put this on, which I'll show you, like that, that feels absolutely warm. I'm up toasty warm inside this house. In fact, I'm boiling like that. But we had minus five, minus six here. The ground was frozen, you know, as hard as iron, basically, as, as the saying goes. And um, this can even go even higher. So we had times when it was that cold, you'd want it like this, like that. And I did have it like that, because when I went down to the allotment, basically, that it was that cold. And the whole idea is, this can be tucked in, into your whatever clothing you're wearing, and away you go. Put that on, and put a hat on on top, like that. You could work anywhere like that, basically and safe around machinery, etc. Because you're enclosed. There's no like free free sides. There's no, nothing to catch, etc. And you can work away. Can, it basically fits very closely to you. And I found that to be useful to do. So that cost me ten pound out of my money to buy, to buy this whole works top. And I, but I made it into something that I would wear because I'd never wear the works top again. 
Um, and that torso piece there was cut from one torso, cut from a, one torso, uh, ripped apart, folded over, and basically st uh, stitched. And and it's and it stayed stable. The other one I made, which was more troublesome to make, I actually with this one here, I actually cut the uh, elasticated waistband off. I sliced it off. And um, but when I measured up the torso right round my neck, I found it was a bit short and it would be, be a bit tight and you need a bit of stretch. And, the other, and of course, when I talked to you earlier about stretch and gift bags, well with these, the stretch is this way, okay, because that sideways, it's going to go over your head, you're going to need some stretch that goes over your head. The top side, which is visible um, as a fashion item, is just folded over, but the bottom side of this um, neck warmer is the side that I've cut myself with, you know, the fashion scissors. And basically, I put a double line of stitching on, a stretch stitch and a straight stitch. And with this particular one, I actually cut the waistband off, but then sewed it in. So I had to double sew it one side, and then on the other side. But I'll do a couple of close-ups for you to show you what I actually did with these. And I have, as I said earlier, done a complete set of videos on how you make one of these. I'm I'm not aiming at this whether it's men or women who are interested in in, in this. But I am particularly interested in identifying with um, blokes on, about this because these sorts of skills are the sort of skills, machine making things with our hands, that I'm worried we're going to lose. And, I, and it bothers me to think that everything can just come out of a brown box and you don't know how to fix things yourself. And the sewing machines, I really, really enjoyed fixing them. And some of them I never thought I'd be able to fix. But when you look at the mechanics and working of one, it's very, very logical. So there's a lot you can do. And I will talk about that. It's another issue. Just as a last part to what I was going to say to you, um, here I see me without, without my hat on. Uh, if you like instrumentals, then uh, I didn't mention to you the last, uh, another one which is on this theme of um, the tide, etc. Of course, is one of the causes of the tide, which is the moon. The moon is sung together, of course, uh, raising tides on the earth. And I did an instrumental, I wrote an instrumental called The Moon, if you want to listen to that. That could probably be found if you listen on um, rootnote.com or on Songstore. You probably get a sample. Rootnote sometimes you can hear a bit, a bit more. And but just going back briefly to my to my neck warmers. Even now in April, look at my watch now. It's the 17th of April. Okay, we've only really had four or five uh, days frost-free and not a lot of rain. So these particular like neck warmers that are made for four months of the year in England these were like very very useful and we got fooled because in 2012 we had such a terrible year it was a very very wet year, very, too much rain really in a short space of time and of course it was the Olympics year but then we sort of got lulled in the late end of the year, in November and December, we thought, oh, it's not too bad, you know, you could sort of get around in November and December. Yeah, there was a little bit of frost and a bit of snow, but then suddenly it, the big freeze came. And even going around with a normal coat on and gloves, etc., you still froze, seriously froze. It was, it was very bad. But these, these homemade neck warmers, I don't know what it is about them, but I was just like so, <laughs> so happy. To be able to make something out of something that I myself would never have used. So there you go. But as I say, think of a theme like that. Um, think of the sort of things other people might like, or, or things you might think they might like that catch the eye. And just remember, if someone doesn't know you and you're turning up somewhere, everybody's incredibly visual. Uh, I learned that at a craft store went to and we were next to a photographer who used a portfolio of his work and people were stopping and looking at his portfolio uh, and that opens up a conversation with someone and that was someone who was a very very talented you know professional photographer in these hard times but even he was having to show people what he can do okay and basically just remember that you've got to think when you make whatever it is you're doing you know how much you're going to want for it and who's going to buy it? That's it, really. I'll do then.